Hello and good morning, good evening, wherever you are. I hope you all are all all of you are safe and uh, yeah, it's um it's a tough time where we all kind of see every day as it comes. And today we have a beautiful session from our darling Gucharan. And as always, you know, when it comes to good sessions, it's it's full of energy from the beginning till the end. And there are so many requests so far from uh, our viewers uh, to get him back again on our session. Plus, he is going to talk about a lot of, he's going to answer a lot of questions. In fact, uh, especially talking about editing. And uh, if you don't know about Gucharan, uh, he is a Kenyan, I mean, he's based in Kenya, is an amazing photographer, a wonderful person, and very down to earth. So let me just introduce him over here invite him over here hi good hey hey how are you doing you're well all good all good thank you how are you i'm fine i'm just uh, wondering about how you've taken the dubai weather with you to uh, Canada. <laughs> you've got 50 degrees now you've got 50 degrees in around you <laughs> this is definitely crazy whenever people ask me why i moved to canada always the answer was because of the weather I uh, ran away and, from, and, you know, Dubai, and now it is 50 degrees here. It's crazy. And you have a cold by the sounds of it, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> but thank God we are online because it was COVID out. I said, let's cancel this <laughs> session. Yeah. No, I usually fall sick when the weather is really, you know, on the heater side or heat side. And uh, exactly the same thing happened. When it was cold, I didn't have any problem. Last two days, slight fever, a bit cold, crazy. So, so you get a hot cold. Hot cold. Yeah, not a hot cold. <laughs> hot cold, yeah. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So when you're in Dubai, you're just cold, sick, sick, sick all through, were you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I always used to fall sick, especially with cold. And I uh, get a dry cough when the weather is pretty high. Mm. Uh, fair enough. This fair is enough. like... Yeah. So, yeah. so uh, talking about the session, for sure, yes. let's... Uh, we're talking about all these sort of, uh, you know, black background, dark edits. Uh, obviously, this was inspired by when you were in the Mara and we're talking about all these black shots. And I was like, I have to beat her on these black shots. And I've done it now. <laughs> yeah, so uh, let's hope they're well and everybody enjoys. Uh, I think we've lost sound on your side. Can you hear me? Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Okay, cool. I can't hear you. You've gone silent. So, uh, no, I, I, what oh, I'm, doing is I'm just yeah. trying to share all uh, this in all the social media channels so that okay. once we start, we are all all set. Okay, so the questions again will come through you or yes. we'll just keep a watch. Uh, yeah, so I'll wait for you. Stop me wherever you want to yeah. and uh, just send over the questions and we shall answer as many as we can and as best as we can. How do you want me to do it? Or shall I do it in the end or as it comes? Uh, sometimes if it's a question in respect to the photo, please uh, let's talk about it at that photo. Okay. If it's something that we think it can go till the end, then we'll pick them up at the end. Sure. Yeah. Will so be. when it's especially when it's in respect to the photo, then we can just catch up on it Will there and then. Yeah. yeah. Super. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Let's get cracking. Yeah looking forward yeah yeah yes all right here we go yeah so as uh we've called it my dark side <laughs> so we're trying to bring the bad out in me <laughs> but um obviously it's to talk about all these uh dark type photos i mean uh a big ins this was a big inspiration when i started photography and was trying to get all these sort of black backgrounds and I'm going to share my story on how I took them from regular shots into dark shots to eventually now trying to make sure that you get the shot right in camera. And we're going to talk about at least the basic settings that you need to review to get this going or to get this working and uh, equipment that I'm using as well to get this going. And we'll see it from there. Uh, as usual, we always start with an introduction of me. Uh, I won't bore all of you again, and I'll just just highlight the fact that I'm inspiring. I'm an inspiring photographer on the weekends. It's not a weekday. It's not a weekday thing. It's just a hobby, and this is all about passion. That's how it's driven. 
Um, jumping on to the next one, it's equipment. Uh, a lot of people like to know what equipment we take. Um, to be honest with you, uh, I, I believe more the more equipment than clothes to the Mara. <laughs> so <laughs> clothes, two, three pairs of shorts, couple of t-shirts, and a lot of equipment. <laughs> yeah. Um, we we want to make sure that the in-flight luggage is as utilized as best as we can to pick up all these big heavy equipment. But to be honest with you, these days with the amount of equipment I have, it's sometimes uh, better to drive myself there and then plan it otherwise. As you can see, um, these are shots that you've probably not seen. Not many people have seen. You can um, you can obviously see the cameras and the lenses. Uh, in the photos, you've got my buggy right in the middle. Next to the buggy, you've got my camera box in camo. I've got a waterproof box, which is on the top left-hand side corner. Um, going further down, I've got a charging station because I've got so many different types of uh, batteries to charge on a daily basis. I've got the, uh, the big Nikon batteries, the small batteries, AA batteries, AAA batteries. Um, I've got the flash batteries now as well. I use a couple of Sony, is it N series or F series uh, for connecting to the screen. These days, my fancy gadgets have a remote transmission. So a lot of battery charges. And, you know, when you go out to lodges, you don't get enough sockets on the wall. So I have a little box made. You connect the one and you get cracking with it. Um, Going on to the next slide, let's look at sort of uh, where I have been featured. You can see Nikon uh, N Photo, a couple of port portrayal magazines. Uh, Sky was a magazine in Delta Airlines. Nomad is a Kenyan magazine. Wild Day is also a Kenyan magazine. Uh, you've got Remembering Rhinos. I've been featured on The Guardian. Uh, I've been featured on a Nikon French magazine, to my surprise. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, featured on the sun the times with this crazy rhino shot that i was very lucky to get yeah and let's not forget a cover photo with the uh, big cat trail so that's the one today with this is the best one yeah tomorrow it might be another one but today this is the best one thank you thank you <laughs> thank you very much and uh, this this was uh, leading to our first meeting with nisha i remember we had coffee in that little place uh yeah. Yeah, and we discussed saying any chance we can have a photo for a book cover and I was honestly blown away as well. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Happy days. Thank you very much for bringing me into the family. Appreciate it so much. Thank you. All right. Thank yeah. you. And cracking on to the slideshow, obviously, first I want to make everyone, let's provoke your thoughts. What makes an amazing photo? Please send us messages comment on this let's listen to what you feel oh wow sorry there i didn't see there's so many comments already there yeah uh, in fact uh, i would just like to give you a shout out there is a mehdi mentioned that you don't have a dark side <laughs> <laughs> i've just seen it <laughs> mehdi is a super guy and we'll be doing some work together with uh respect to photography workshops and stuff with Medi, uh -huh. so i'm looking forward to them and uh i'm looking forward to it. it'll be cracking i'm sure yeah yeah That's and uh, oh sitya's online as well nice to hear from her and her yeah macro photos are just amazing amazing uh, yeah, Cynthia's macro photos are just crazy. <laughs> Obviously not the behind the scenes when she comes out all dirty and stuff. So I don't <laughs> want to see that, Cynthia. We want to see the great shots though. But it's just true testament to how much effort goes into getting those amazing yeah. shots. Beautiful. Yeah. And yeah. the good part is she moved to Costa Rica. With yes, Elena. yes. Great, yeah, she moved great. to Costa Rica with it. Yeah. I've been following her photography. It's really amazing. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so uh, back to the question, what makes an amazing photo? So come on, guys, keep pushing them. We'll review this at the end. So keep sending all your answers in. We'll see who gets it right first. Uh, once we come to the end, we'll obviously go through this question again. But yeah. obviously being an online session, it's very different from being in a classroom uh -huh. where I can uh, ask so I, everyone I, I to answer. I think I'll start with a, small, uh, a com big compliment from Angad. So he put the first thing is like what makes a amazing photo, and his answer is good, Charan. 
<laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say my Nikon, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's all about the camera. It's all about the camera. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there you go, Angit. You're right. Perfect. Sorted. Everyone else, yeah, we're sorted. We <laughs> yeah. All right. So we, we'll revisit this question towards yes. the end of the session and yep. talk about it. So in the meantime, how I'm going to break this down is I've got a couple of Astro, I've got a couple of uh, rim light and a couple of uh, brushwork, uh, a before and after, and a couple of mix of things. So. Um, Let's see how we can do. And uh, I've just read a message from Hermes. Sorry, yes. you can't come online because there's a party going on. I know he's enjoying it because Misha is not there <laughs> and he's having a great party. Uh, you can't miss any of the sessions and we are going to, you know, we should get him to pay for this later. Uh, yeah. right? we'll, yeah. so, we'll sort this out. Yeah, <laughs> we'll, This will be our private. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's start with the first ones. Uh, we're going to start with Astro. Okay. And uh, I know it's not an Astro shot next to it, but it's yeah. just something to keep it going. Um, here, here we go. So always I, I love Astro photography. Obviously, there's an Astro season in when you can photograph Astro because there's a on season and off season. And what I mean by the on season and off season is when the stars, or should I say not the stars, when the galactic center is available. Uh, usually in Kenya from February to around November is when you can get the galactic center. Uh, obviously, this time of the year is the best time to get it. The Around July, it's available around 7 o'clock at night and goes all the way through the night. The later you go, the higher it is during the night. But um, there's a lot of apps you can deal with and sh uh, show you what or where to look for it or which way to point. Um, Photopills is a great one that I like to use, but that's a different matter. We can always discuss that later. But, you know, going back onto it, um, uh, astrophotos, the odd part with astrophotos is trying to get a composition with just stars because it's something so common. So what I like to do is I always like to put something in the foreground, something to create the story. Here it is, me stargazing, put on the timer, run, hold the torch still for 30 seconds or 20 seconds. What was it? 20 seconds. Hold the torch as still as you can and go for it. It looks kind of like a laser. It's not. It's just a torch with a very narrow beam. But uh, <clears throat> And then uh, you can't go wrong with this, yeah. Helicopter and stars, yeah. Up in the north of Kenya, out in Turkana, oh, amazing trip I did here with Thomas. And uh, I asked Thomas if he wanted to wake up. Uh, <laughs> I think he had just come from a trip for Russia, and he didn't want to wake up that night. But I, I went, and we were, we had so many scorpions in this place, and the lodge gave me a UV light to try and get to this place safe and sound. And you know, even when I was trying to go onto my knees to try and set up the camera, and I'd be like, UV torch first. Okay, now I'm going down. Now UV torch. Now changing one setting. UV torch. Yeah. Oh so always, gosh. it was crazy. And then as soon as I finished this around five in the morning, and I went back to my tent, the leopard just went crazy, roaring. I think the leopard was sitting somewhere around just watching me and wondering, uh, what's this crazy guy up to in the middle of the morning yeah? or the I'm night? I'm glad to see you now. <laughs> <laughs> me too. <laughs> me too. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, picking up again, we always something in the foreground. Here we go. In this case, uh, aeroplane. This is at the Angama airstrip. We are going there doing some work for Angama. And we got the Milky Way with a plane at the front and this was just by chance you know we weren't expecting a plane to be at the airstrip we got there and there's a plane and we made the most out of it um, normally i target nights which don't have a moon in that way you find the sky is very black but when the moonlight comes this is what you get and this is a shot in amboseli you've seen kilimanjaro in the back you can see the snow on the excuse me snow on the mountain we've got a little lion who tried to behave. I managed to get him not to move so much for 10 seconds. Uh, 
it worked out and you can see a bit of the stars. It actually looks like a shot taken in the day thanks to, uh, even you can see the ISO I've dropped to a thousand for 10 seconds. And uh, the first shot I did was at uh, about 3,200, 4,000 ISO and all I got was white. <laughs> it was like a day shot. So uh, the moon makes a big, big, big difference. Uh, again, hopping across, we have the same theme, lion, uh, stars in the background. I couldn't get the galactic center on this night, but I'm super happy. And uh, <laughs> it's long since we've heard your laugh. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm surprised this is only 3,200 ISO. Yes, I, I intentionally tried to keep it low because I wanted minimum noise. I wanted to try and keep the lion still as well. And we used the flash and the flash oh, okay. was coming out too bright. Uh, I got myself one of those Godox flashes where you can change the front to a tube or a okay. beauty dish or something like that. And that's how I've been working these days, but uh, just mucking around. Uh, Good point from graphite and paper. Where do you focus on such images? You focus on the infinity, the center of the infinity ring. Or what you do is when you have your composition set up, your camera set up, uh, go into live view, zoom as far as you can, or zoom as much as you can into, so you have one star in the image or in the viewfinder, and then focus on that one star and then zoom out. Uh, when I mean zoom, I mean uh, digital zoom on the viewfinder, not not the lens. Yeah, so uh, that that's how you do. No focus stacking. These are all single exposure shot, single exposures. They're not um, exposures put together, multi shots put together. It's just one single exposure. Yeah. Um, now we're gonna break it out to brush tool yeah so this is uh been a big one for me or this is how i started and this is literally my first ever shot in back black background yeah okay. this was my first shot it was a shot of blackie yeah uh, when you're still alive it was taken in the day and we went using the brush tool and mucked around with it uh, now i look back at it and i find all sorts of faults and errors but uh, hey we're all that's striving really to awesome. be better we're all striving to be better and that's what it's all about yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, going on still on the brush tool side of things yeah love love i'm really loving i'm actually putting together a set of shots talking about just details you know rather than going the whole subject or something just picking up bits like here in this case a task i've got other shots i don't want to talk too much about them because i'm still working on the series and then instagram will explode one day yeah <laughs> <laughs> there is one yeah. question um yes. could you also get such shots with f4 Yes, you could get such shots with F4. I am using my F2.8, uh, 2470. But if you want to use the F4, whereas I'm just going to jump. Uh, when you say F, you mean the Astro shots is what I'm talking about, I believe. I, yeah, I think he's talking about the Astro shots. Yes, yeah. you could. In this case, where my ISO is 1000, you might mm -hmm. have to go two steps higher. So you might be 2000 something, or you might be around 3200. But yes, very, very possible with F4. Yeah. Um, yeah, we have one more question from uh, Salil. Uh, he's asking, how come no star trails? I do have star trail shots, but maybe Not I just forgot position. to put them. I just forgot to put them. It's just, I haven't got, it's, it's just lines. I, it, I need it to be more than just lines or find some sort of interesting composition or something to make it work. And hey, thank you for the inspiration. And hopefully next time I'll work on that. All right. Great. Yeah. Uh, here we go. This is a more recent shot in the Mara. Again, a little bit of brushwork. It's very, very difficult to get such shots naturally black and white, or should I say naturally with black backgrounds. But yes, I'm going to work on and show you how I've done it. Uh, here's another brush tool. Again, another brush tool shot uh, from Solio. I uh, love this. And you know, uh, 
there's an artist in Canada who's taken this and done such an amazing sketch of it. Yeah, and I was actually thinking I should have put the sketch side by side with this and then seen what came out of it. Uh, again, flamingo, black background. Yeah, beautiful bird, looks crazy angry here. Yeah, beautiful shot of uh, leopard. <laughs> I call my own shots beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone has to, someone has to call me good. Yeah, <laughs> someone has to call bird. me good. Yeah, I have and, a question. So these are uh, from night or is it, uh, you know, all from day? all from day okay. and the neck shot is actually bringing together where it Ooh. was and what it is okay yeah and yeah. Uh, another thing that i'd like you guys to note is can you see my mouse uh, no, you can. yeah we can you can you can see yes. the mouse yeah yes uh another thing i'd like to really note is look what i've gone for the background this is yes. why uh the workshop the background is key to this element okay. so either you're going to go for a sky back or you, in this case i went for a very bright green background i moved my car so that the background stayed super green as it is and the reason for that is then when you go into your black and whites you can just drop your greens to black nearly. Okay. And ninety percent of your work is done. What will remain is you see these little white spots. Yes. Will remain, and then you just brush over the white spots with a bit of exposure dropping. Yeah. And at that rate, once it's like that, even if you do brush over on a very slight, you know, like um, a exposure of minus. 0.1 or minus 0.2 or something like that, mm -hmm. which will help those blacks. And even if you do brush over the whiskers, they'll still remain because they're white. So, I mean, but uh, brushing over the whiskers is really a painful process, right? You need to go. Oh, no, no, sorry. So you, you, you haven't got me. So what I would do is I'll pick up the brush tool mm -hmm. and cause of only the 90% of the background will be black yes. already. And there'll just be some small areas left of white. And when you're brushing over those small areas of white, even if you go over the whiskers, it'll make no difference because okay. it's a very small percentage. It's not like you're going five points or four points or three points on the exposure tool. You're going point something. You're okay. not going two point something. You're just going point something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, because the 90% of the work has been done by getting the right background. Getting okay. this green background, that's done 90, 95% of your work. And then you just drop your greens and 90% of your shot has already achieved the effect I was trying to achieve. So you don't and, convert it into black and white in, in the beginning? You only change? No, no. I, I, yeah, definitely. Go into black and white and then you because the black and white mix will not appear until okay. you convert it into black and white. Okay. Yeah. And then once you've converted into black and white, go and drop the individual yeah. colors that you want to drop. Yeah. And then work on your tones and your exposures and your textures and your dehaze. And okay. that will give you the shot. And literally... Uh, I've been doing workshops. I did a workshop with Kevin Richardson, the uh, Lion Whisperer. Yeah. And I showed him how to do this, and it took me three minutes online explaining it to him. That's wonderful. Yeah. So it's just about getting the right background. And if you get the right background, if you go and get the wrong background with a big mess at the back, pull it, it's going to be a very hard shot to do. It might be virtually impossible unless you go and discard the whiskers. I've seen a lot of photographers who are doing these black backgrounds, but the whiskers are missing. Yeah, It's only because you're not just, you know, try and work with the right backgrounds. You know, sky backs are amazing, but not for whiskers, because if you get a sky back on whiskers, the sky goes white or it goes bright. Or if it's a nice blue sky, then you can just drop the blues, not the greens. But greens are best. And if you get a dark bush at the back, and if the bush is in the shade, I'm telling you, you don't need to do any work. Just F9, ISO 100, boom, 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 and you'll automatically get these shots in black background. But that now I know with experience. Yeah, before I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we should now move to rim lighting. Again, this is having fun and... Wow, this was a job and this, you know, trying to experience, trying to learn this job was hard and here we go. 
leopard lim- rim lighting. You know, whenever you're seeing a leopard, usually it's your pulse going rather than the camera. Yeah, <laughs> you try and match your camera with the pulse. Yes, yeah? so it's like. Brr, 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 yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, you, you know, you're trying to work this. Yes, there is a little bit of uh, Lightroom editing where you're trying to darken the blacks and do stuff like that. But the bulk of the shot in this case is done in camera. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, again, again, rim light. The thing with rim light is what you have to do is you have to make sure that you're not going to be 100% in front of the sun because you want your subject in between so if i point towards the camera if this is your subject this is you you want the sun not 100 percent behind slightly to the side because when the sun is 100 percent behind you're getting a lot of exposure thanks to the sun and you're trying to reduce the exposure and you're only trying to pick up the light so move the sun 20 30 degrees to either side of your subject Normally, I would always pick up not towards the back of the subject, always towards the front of the subject. Uh, sometimes it's not possible in the wild, but whichever way you can move left or right, the rim then looks better rather than trying to just pick up. Uh, 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 you know, once the sun is in the back, then you're going to try and brush tool to get the sun to disappear and it's difficult then you'll get flares in the lens you'll get all sorts of stuff which will make your shot really difficult and this one is my favorite shot and yes you can still see me and here look it's still oh come on i'm trying to get rid of all the messages on my phone to try and show you <laughs> yeah it's my yeah. It's my, this is, this has been, and it's one of my favorite shots. We were actually running around leopards and I told my driver, like, stop, leave the leopard for a minute. I want this giraffe. And he turns around, he stopped the vehicle and he turns around and looks at me saying, is this guy for real? He's leaving leopards for giraffes. But this is the reason I was leaving it because I saw the opportunity with the acacia bush in the back. I saw the way the rim was hitting only one side of the giraffe. I had to do this. I really, really had to do this. Uh, someone's asked what's happening to Hermes. Hermes is having a great party without us. So <laughs> message him, send him messages, disturb him as much as you can. Go ahead and do that. Yeah. If, if you don't have his telephone number, I'll give you his telephone number. <laughs> Hermes is in Mara and there is a birthday party going on. So that's the reason he's missing over here. <laughs> She hasn't made it any better, yeah. He's in the Mara <laughs> one. He's having a party too, yeah. So it's not any better, yeah. <laughs> well, us guys are here trying to slave away, trying to work out how to do things in a different way. <laughs> yeah. Lucky are the people who at the time of COVID, you know, coming in doing a party. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. Mara is probably the best place, social distancing from everyone. Yeah. yeah, so, yeah. And on yeah. top of that, this particular group, they came with a, a kit to test everybody before the party as well. So, oh, wow. So yeah. Hermes, has been, Hermes has been tested as well. Tested twice so far. <laughs> <laughs> we need him to fail it so he can go and sit in his tent quietly. Yeah? <laughs> let, me, let me speak to Johnny. I'll sort that one out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, still on the rim light subject, here we go. Yeah, uh, yep. lovely cheetah, the grass is all lit up on rim light. In this case, it was headlights of a vehicle. And mm-hmm. um, again, another one rim light, one of my wow. favorite shots. Wow. And being my favorite shot, I thought I'd show it to you. Here is a before and after. Oh, well, that's amazing. Yeah, so a lot of times now we're going to talk about, you know, getting it right in camera. Yeah, Yeah. so look at that. You know, we were so lucky. We managed to use a vehicle at the back to uh, drop these lights in, the smoke, the mist that was coming up, and uh, such a, you know, there's emotion in the shot in some way. The the smoke gives it so much more, you know. uh, I've been enjoying... as a photographer, I really struggle to do groups of subjects. I love doing individual, maybe two, maybe, but I love individual subjects. Yeah. And an individual subject is giving you one element, and you're always trying to find more elements to blend the shot or to come together so you can get something that 
is worth talking about. And, you know, this is one of those shots that for me was, I didn't even realize I had it until much later. But, you know, some one of those days that you're bored and you go and you sit and you start looking through all your shots and like, when did I take this one? Yeah? <laughs> did I? Was it me? Is it my shot? Yeah. Well, it's an amazing shot. Thank you very much. Yeah. And uh, now let's move towards light source. Uh, in light source, we'll talk about now, for example, here we go, taken with a flash. Yeah. And uh, so this is from Conservancy? Uh, let's not talk about it. <laughs> no, it's a conservancy. I'm not only joking. Yeah. It's a conservancy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so it's not as dark as it looks. But okay. because we were using a flash and we were able to drop the exposure significantly in camera, we okay. were able to play. You can see F11 at night. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so I'm really tightening to just let a little bit of light in mm -hmm. so I could expose the sky correctly. And then the flash obviously looks after the subject. And if I did too much of ISO, that would mean that the subject would be totally blown out. Yeah. Yeah, so we tried to do a balance. Maybe I should have done a different shutter speed. I don't know. I'm not the expert in these matters, but I go there and I try different things. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't work, I'm back where I started. No loss. You know <laughs> what I mean? Yeah. Yes. So, and obviously the question here, or for those of you who do use flash, is how did I limit the flash to only hit the front of the lion and not the whole bush and everything around. And for that, I've got a little fancy device called a MagBeam kit. It's made by a company called uh, MagMod. I was out with Steven Seagal in South Africa doing a workshop for him at Kailami Racing Circuit. It was a whole photo experience thing. And I walked past this and I was like, hmm, I have an idea about this. I think I know where I can use it. And here we are. This is the shot using this MagBeam kit. So basically, it's you, you put on a little adapter on your flash, which has two magnets on it. And then you take on the black uh, rubbery bit at the back. You put in the type of glass you want on it. And you just stick it on as a magnet, connect it to your camera, however you wish to connect it, wireless, wired however you want, and you can flash away. And in my case, I held it separate from the camera because I wanted to aim it to the camera. Uh, if you did notice, I had a little, uh, I'm going to jump all the way to the first slide. Yeah. Uh, not, the, not the first slides. And here we go. So if you look at this, you can see this little tool here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you've got this I little claw. That. You've got a little claw with the arm. Yeah. The one so with the red, blue, and some green and okay. so, uh, so it's this. Um, oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, will that make a difference? The big pointer. Yeah. You see the pointer? Yeah. That that yeah. that tool here. Yeah. So with this tool, I could tie the flash onto the vehicle and then manually keep moving it until where I found was the right position. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So th that's how I did the shot. You know, it's getting very technical now. Huh? Uh, yeah, it is. <laughs> uh, so yes. we have a question from um, uh, um, Malhar, but uh, doesn't, doesn't it disturb the animals while you use the flash? I thought so as well. And then I went out and I started using the flash. It's so momentary it disappears before they even. And if it did disturb them, I would expect have expected that uh, oops i've gone the wrong way i would have expected that this lion would have walked away not stopped enjoyed i took maybe a couple of hundred shots here and this lion stopped and posed and rode so i think if it was disturbing the animal it would have the animal would have just left and i've seen that when i'm doing stuff uh, when I'm doing, or, you know, sometimes you'll try and push the limits and the animal just walks up and goes away. So I've now learned where to draw the line or is this, and, you know, first day I went and I tried out flashes. Um, e even better on this is that's using a light from the back. The hyena is relaxed. Um, here's an element where the sun is hitting from the back, so they are aware of it. 
Uh, another one with light from the back or flash as well is here's a shot with flash and he didn't move. He didn't care. He just kept on sitting there roaring. Uh, I, I know there's a lot of other photographers out there who use flash big time and their work is phenomenal and award winning at the same time. And I didn't know. I tried this for myself. It worked perfectly fine. I... I, I believe, obviously, there's an element of people who like to make uh, drama saying, oh, this guy is doing it and it's disturbing the animals. I've got so many people who talk about my low-level photography saying I'm going there and I'm disturbing them. But you know what? Uh, if you start listening to people and you start doing things, as people say, you might as well pack up your camera and don't leave your TV and just sit in front of your TV and watch Discovery. But I guarantee you somebody will call you and complain about that, that you haven't left in front of the TV. Yeah, uh, yeah. we have few. I, I totally understand, you know, it, it, yeah. we all have different opinion on different subjects. So um, we need to do, uh, we need to go ahead with what we think is right. Yeah, and do your inspiration thing. Yeah. And if you find that you're disturbing the animal, it's then, visual yeah. that you've disturbed the animal, stop. Yeah. But what I've also noticed is I've been speaking to a few documentary makers who are using drones to film documentaries because that is literally the best way with minimum disturbance rather than bringing a helicopter or a plane. How can yeah. you fly a helicopter low to a lion? And what they say is, yeah, maybe there's some initial restlessness to the animal, but once they realize that this device, because it's the first time they're seeing the device, once they realize that this device is not doing them any harm, they just relax and they act like the whole device does not even exist. Yeah. So it's a up and down. Maybe every animal is like a human. Everyone is individual to their behavior or everyone is individual to what they do. It's not, it's not like this is a guaranteed behavior trait of lions, tick. Every lion, whilst there is a commonality between their behaviors, there is an individual, and every single one is an individual. And I've seen that. Some see your car and run away, whilst others see your car and they come and use your car for shade. They use the shade from your vehicle. So where do you draw the line? If you know you want to be so much of an environmentalist, then maybe you should go on walking safaris and not vehicles in the park. So oh, again, a, that's the problem. The moment the animal hit you, then the animal is killed. <laughs> Yeah, that's the trouble. You know, you have to be careful. You have to be, the word I would try and like to use is you have to use your coconut right. and try and work out, yeah. is, do you feel you're doing wrong? If you feel you're doing wrong, your, your karma is telling you you're feeling you're doing wrong, don't do it. But if you yeah. feel that you, it's not really disturbing, you can find reasons that it's not disturbing the animal, then go ahead and do it. But please be cautious. We need these animals for our children, our grandchildren, our great-great-grandchildren. So I am not in any intention of destroying our planet in any way whatsoever. We have two questions over here related to yes. this. Uh, what's the white balance you used when you use flash? That's the number one. <coughs> automatic. <laughs> automatic. <laughs> okay, okay. I do my ISO on automatic, my white balance on automatic. Yeah, okay. but uh, you could use flash as your white balance if you want. Okay. Then the second one is from as um, can we use internal camera flash for such photos? I doubt you'll even get the strength in it. Yeah, yeah. you won't be able to reach the distance with the internal flash. Mm -hmm. Obviously, if you're using a telephoto, you'll get, first of all, a big shadow in your photo. Uh, once you cross the stage of the shadow, it won't go far enough. All you'll get is the eyes brightened up. You yeah. won't get, you won't get, unless you are at the nose of your side, you know, unless your subject is really close, then it'll be fine. But if you're going to be in wildlife where you're going to end up having to use a telephoto, no, it's not going to work. But there's no harm in trying. I'm not the expert. Unfortunately, all my cameras are pro. None of them have internal flashes, so I've not <laughs> tried it until so the last time I tried this is what my my amateur camera is. Yeah. So okay. Yeah. yeah so yeah. sorry, but I wouldn't be able to do that. Yeah. I'll mm -hmm. answer that question for you. Okay. So uh, sorry, you wanted to ask something. Yeah, I just want to ask you on that high enough picture. So is was it the uh, your photo or? And do you use a spotter for, because you said it's from another vehicle. 
Yes. So, uh, yes, um, I spend a lot of money <laughs> yeah. so to try and deter everybody from it. Yes, it's a second vehicle that acted as a spotter. We were so lucky. We were at a conservancy and one of the rangers called us and said, guys, uh, the hyenas are chasing a wildebeest. We think a kill is imminent. Uh, so the guide asks me, hyenas are to kill kill. Do you want to go? And I was like, absolutely. I hate hyena kills, but I was like, I haven't seen much else today. So let's go for it. Uh, yeah. The family decided, no, we don't want to go and see it. So we were around four vehicles, two vehicles left for the lodge. The ones who wanted to remain, we remained in two vehicles. And eventually what happened is once the kill was made, because we were at sundowners at that time, the light had completely dropped. It was a cloudy day. It was raining. And um, we then went across to this. And when the hyenas were ripping the wildebeest apart, excuse my strong language, yeah, uh, <laughs> not for the faint-hearted for sure. Imagine the sight. Thankfully, it was dark. Uh, we then all moved into one vehicle. And the second vehicle, we took it to the back. And the back or slightly to the right-hand side. You can see the overexposure on the bottom right-hand side, and that's why it is, because the vehicle was a bit to the right-hand side and hitting its lights. And God, when the steam was coming out of that wildebeest's body, that's where that steam is coming from, and that shot, oh, I was just clicking away. It was probably one of the most gruesome but amazing sightings that I've ever had. And I wouldn't like to say that again when you try and put gruesome and amazing together. I hate hyena kills because obviously they don't strangle. They rip everything apart alive. And I hate that. And I don't like to be there. But in this case, I was loving it. Not, But thankfully, the wildebeest was dead when I was shooting. Initially, I wouldn't be able to shoot. Yeah. OK. Um, to, and then uh, still on uh, light source, here's one with light source. Yeah, it's a tiny SB300. It's literally a flash, um, maybe about three, four inches long. And mm -hmm. it was on my buggy and we shot with it. You can see that the buffaloes even right behind haven't uh, hardly exposed. The flash just has little power. I was very close. Uh, you're talking about using your internal flash on the camera. This is probably how you do it. I don't know how you're going to crawl there and get there to this shot. But uh, <laughs> if you have a buggy, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it's interesting. Usually these guys, uh, the moment they see buggy, they move away. Too happy to see that they can actually come closer to. I have a trick up my sleeve and I'm not going to share it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But all I'm going to talk about is when something moves fast, it's scary. <laughs> so okay. you figure out the rest. Well, you figure out the rest. <laughs> that is easy enough. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, only joking. Um, what I've realized is speed and the buggy play an important part. And if you use the buggy on uh, tortoise speed, crawling, literally yeah. crawling, you'll find that the animals will be a lot more perceptive to it. it. They'll be happy to even come and check it out. I mean, I tried buffaloes the first time with the buggy and it didn't work out. And then I went with the buggy and I drove it slowly. And every one of those buffaloes would come up to the buggy to smell it and work out what this is. Yeah. So it's... It, the perception of how you drive your approach, it even goes down to the buggy. How you approach the animal, it's important. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll send the bill later. Yeah? <laughs> uh, I tell you what, my Landy has some amazing lights. Huh? So this was my Landy in the back. Obviously, uh, Rhino at the front. Uh, yes, again, uh, two teams. Uh, the vehicle, the game drive vehicle didn't have good light, so I then swapped my vehicle with my guide and I said, you go and drive my car and I'll drive the, the, the cruiser, I'll drive the company cruiser. Yeah? And uh, he went and he placed. Uh, what I did, you know, 
trying to coordinate with groups of people became is very difficult and we have radios thankfully in kenya and you know we were able to coordinate to get back and approach the rhino very slowly from behind whereas i stood in front and we got these shots with backlight yeah, yeah. Uh, talk yeah again you know guys were asking me if flashes are good or not good and lights and here is an example of a hide. This is a hide in uh, Magadi, Lake Magadi. The place is called Lentore, mm -hmm. and they've got lights on it, but the animals still come and drink. Yeah, so mm -hmm. are lights that bad? Are they not bad? I think it's just getting used to, to it. Yeah, it's just yeah. a matter of getting used to, to it. Yeah, and uh, the hyena was super. I mean, getting a striped hyena is hard enough anyway, and coming there, drinking water for you. The first night the hyena came, all I saw was a head going across and it disappeared. And I spent two nights, I was out there for a helicopter safari over the Magadis for three days, two nights. And we'd go and do the helicopter trip in the day and then we'd come and I'd stay awake in the hide all night on my own. No one else wanted to join me and I'd do it all on my own. And I'll be very honest, when I came back to and when I came back to Nairobi, I must have slept for five, six nights so well. Yeah, because I had so much lack of sleep yeah, that for five, six nights, you know, go to work in the day, come back at night. By five, by six, seven o'clock, I'm, I'm drowsy. By eight o'clock, I'm out. Yeah, I slept well. Yeah. So hide photograph is a good thing if you want to sleep well afterwards. Yeah. Uh, there is a question from Rupal. Yeah. Uh, for height photography, what is the maximum f1 can use? Uh, it doesn't matter because, look, if you have a f5.6, that's the only lens you've got. And your only option there is you're going to go lowest f number at 5.6. Your two options are your shutter speed and your ISO. So I tried to go as low as I could on my shutter speed to drop my ISO as low as I could. So I went 100 to get 3,200. In If you're going to be on 5.6, you might be at ISO 5,000 yeah, with 100 shutter speed. So that is obviously key. Um, what, you know, if you drop further down in the shutter speed, but obviously you risk... Uh, soft shots or out of focus shots because your camera you had camera shake yeah you you, you you're gonna lose it's a it's just basically you've got a exposure triangle one of them is fixed very similar to astrophoto you have to go on the lowest f number you can achieve with your lens and then it's just a matter of playing with shutter speed and iso to get uh, how much exposure you want on the stars and it's absolutely the same thing with hide photography, just that the hide, the animal moves a lot faster than the stars. So you're going to have to be very quick and cheeky on how you're going to do this. Yeah, I used a um, D5 or D850 with my 70 to 200. And if you are going to go to Lentore in Magadi, 70 to 200 is more than enough because you can look at this, it's 175 millimeter. Yeah, um, it's completely fine unless you're going to go get a, a small animals. You know, you get the small cats, you get um, uh, maybe a civet or something like that. Then you might need a bigger zoom than that. But if you're going to get a, uh, if you if you lucky enough to get a buffalo, you seventy two hundred fine get an elephant the 7200 is too much maybe a 2470 would be better uh if you get a giraffe then you might want a 14 millimeter there as well <laughs> have you so, got a chance to get a uh, this caracal from there i've seen uh, from someone else a caracal from there yes yes I, I obviously you're with jeffrey a few weeks yeah, back yeah, on yeah. our workshop with him and jeffrey saw the caracal and he got a amazing shot of the caracal and that's yeah. just yeah it's super i love that shot of his no i wasn't lucky enough to get a caracal but you, you know where i photograph the astro with the lion in the mara yeah we saw a caracal on the way oh yeah. really and yeah we saw a caracal it was night uh it um it was night um what we did was i told the guy we, when we saw the character initially we thought it was just uh 
Edward? one of those spring hairs. We thought no, it was okay. a spring hair because we only saw it from the back. So mm -hmm. we looked at the spring hair. We we're like, oh, okay. We got closer and I'm like, hey, this color is more towards the brown side rather than the mm -hmm. yellow side. And when we got closer, it turned around and looked at us and it was a baby caracal. It had those beautiful big eyes. Wow. Yeah, I still I still can't get them out of my head. And then I told the guy, look, I want to photograph this. I'm bringing out the torch. You put the torch on and I'll shoot. Yeah, like how mm -hmm. we were doing. I'll show you some shots of how we were doing. And uh, we had the red filter torch with us. I set it up. Uh, we turned on the lights and the caracal was nowhere to be seen. <laughs> we looked yeah. for the next, so we looked for a long time. We didn't see it anyway. You know, you, you, you blink to a caracal and it's gone. Yeah. So not complaining, but uh, yeah. Works. Yeah. We have one more question from Graphite. Uh, is this also flash photography? How you know the animal are approaching in hide IR sensor? No, human sensor. You stay awake and you watch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, two eye sensors. And so... <laughs> yeah. You can rest one eye at a time if you want to, but you can't sleep. Yeah, you snooze, you lose. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Cynthia. I've just seen a comment from her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and then uh, here we go. Uh, now, in this case, we had uh, what I was doing is I, on this on this particular day, I didn't have a secondary vehicle and stuff. So all I did was when people would switch on their engines and turn on their lights to leave, I would take full advantage of that. And this is side light from a vehicle hitting the lion. You can see the lion just doesn't care. He's not bothered. He's yeah. so relaxed about it. And I'm so inspired by half light. Yeah, I don't know what it is. I don't enjoy this face on light. I love this side. Excuse me. Uh, I love this side light. And I've been working towards side light. I believe my shot posted on Insta today is also side light. Yeah, I'm, I'm honestly in love with side light. I, these days, if I'm doing lighting, it has to be side or back, never front. Okay. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll keep talking about side light. Here we go, side light again. That's yeah. a beautiful one. Thank you. Yeah, we, I just, you know, wanted that uh that one side and also the second horn in light yeah that's it yeah. i just wanted that and um, they were really nice and relaxed to me i was very happy that they behaved and i got a shot so i'm not complaining huh? <laughs> um, here we go on to the next one again side light with a buffalo this time it was drinking water we managed we were at a dam uh, totally natural dam. It wasn't um, Lentore. It was out in the wild. Look at the ISO 8000. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I think you should be able to see it on screen as well. Yeah. But when yeah. I put it on Insta, yeah, you never notice. Yeah. When I put it on Insta, nobody will notice. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> it's probably a reason I haven't posted this shot. But I'm just, mm -hmm. you know, uh, had I got an f2.8 lens here, I'd have probably been able to bring this down to 4000 because I'm dropping it by two or three stops more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, such is life. You shoot with what you have. Uh, I was asked questions. Can you use an F4? Yes, you can. Here you go. Here's an example. Yeah, it's not. It doesn't have to be an F2.8. You can do. It'll work. It'll still be fine. Don't stress about it. Um, here we are using skylight. We're using the light from the setting sun or the set sun, and then the blue hour before it go. The blue light before it goes completely dark, and. That's what I'm using. That's and cool. obviously, I'm sure there'll be a lot of questions saying, when we do this, we get the ground. And how do you get to do this? But yes, we will talk about it. And I have prepared how it's done. Yeah. OK. And again, here we go. I love flamingos, man. And I had a great time at Lake Elman of recent. Yeah, just beautiful lighting and we managed to get our own lighting and the flamingos pose everything just worked out right and then finally talking about how we did it and okay. you can see on this one the only thing that i've moved literally is the highlights and the da's everything else is as original 
that's all the edit on this shot. You know, just trying to get the shots as best as you can in camera. Wonderful. Yeah, and obviously, you know, a lot of questions arise saying, how do you focus in low light? How do you deal with high ISO uh, metering? What do you do? How do you get this? How does it work? And I'll be very, very honest with you guys. I have just picked up a D6. And the focus <laughs> on that thing is just mental. It just needs that little bit of ambient light, and it is on lock instantly. It's not, I've had the D5, I have a D850, I have gone through D4, D4S, and when it's low light, you're always fighting with the focus. Sometimes you're ending up going manual. And I'm not the guy to sing songs. We are not here to sell cameras. This is money I've spent. And the D6, oh, you know, I, I've seen the 3D focus on it. I've seen how it focuses with flying subjects. I had a pre-production camera that I went and I had serial number 0001 to play with. Yeah, and I enjoyed playing with that. I haven't looked at what the serial number of mine is, but I will check one day. And But, oh, man, the focus system on that camera is just something else. And I know when you look at the statistics, it doesn't show a significant improvement from the D5, but when you use it, you'll understand. As a matter of fact, I'm loving it so much. I picked it up, I think, about three or four months ago. In the last three or four months, I've done zero uh, low-level photography, zero high-level photography. I've just been so crazily in love with that D6. I've been using it for everything I'm doing. It's really, really amazing. I also got myself the 18400 with the uh, 1.4 converter on board. Oh, My I'm in piece. love with that combo. I'm really in love with that combo. That's an amazing piece, yes. Yeah. Have and, you heard uh, anything from Nikon on... Low weight cameras. I mean, Obviously, uh, the Z9 is going to be a, not a cameras, big game lens. lenses. No, I haven't because I've see you've got a uh, yeah on your which uh, which arm is it right hand yeah right so hand you, yes so, so is that because of your camera no that's your trigger finger one yeah uh, you. <laughs> <laughs> the camera the lot of work I think that's why I've, I've been thinking about you, you know this low weight I'm hoping these guys will come up with the low weight yeah. stuff soon I agree with you because uh, one of my friends had a Sony six hundred F. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and honestly, it was this heavy. Yeah, you can manage it. It, it, it was fingers. this heavy. Yeah, oh, yes, you do miss the weight, but it was so light, it was so quick to work with it. And yeah. I totally understand what you're saying. For obviously, us users who are a bit more stronger and healthy, it's okay. For weak yeah. ones who have bandages on their arms, yes, you need lighter <laughs> stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, but no, I agree with you. And you know, the biggest key is traveling with gear. If I had to travel with my D6 and my 18400, that's all my weight allocation gone. Yes. Yeah. How do you travel with so much gear? That's why I said I love to drive. And probably the reason why I don't travel internationally for photography because I have too much gear with me these days. It's always a crazy thing. Yeah. And uh, let, let's. Um, yeah, we have this, few questions well, oh, before cool, we cool. move forward. Um, <laughs> uh, at, at such low shutter speed, I think we answer this still, at low shutter speed, how do you manage to get such sharp photos? Rock hands. <laughs> <laughs> bean bag. Use a bean bag. Yeah, use a bean use bag. A bean use bag a tripod. Yes. Bean, bean bags are really good. Obviously, we have VR on most of the lenses. Turn on the yeah. VR part as well. Use a bean bag. Bean bag is the biggest key to the whole wildlife game. Yeah, yeah. hand holding these shots sometimes won't work. Uh, whilst I say that uh, the buffalo shot, the flamingo shot, these were all handheld. But um, this is me with so much practice, and you, you know what I mean. Yeah. yeah. But I would really recommend a beanbag, and that is a game changer. And a lot of times I even find myself saying, okay, I'm too shaky, drop a beanbag, we're going to put a beanbag here, and we're going to work with it. Yeah. 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 And uh, we have a comment from Mr. Hermes Heridas, even my favorite lens is 18400 <laughs> Says the one who's disturbing all the animals, <laughs> music and everything at the moment. Yeah, party animal. Yeah, 
Yeah. <laughs> Don't listen to him, just ignore him for a bit. <laughs> we'll talk yeah. to him after the session. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, now, the biggest, biggest key to rim lighting, to night photography, except Astro, of course, uh, the biggest key to all this is metric. You can get everything else wrong, but if you get your metering set up correctly, all your shots will just work out perfectly. And does anybody want to have a look and suggest which metering type they should use? Because I think it's really obvious. But yeah. just to make it a bit more obvious, when you're doing these shots, you need to change your metering to spot. Normally, nine out of 10 times, I'll use matrix metering, so not matrix center weighted for wildlife. But when it comes to rim light, when it comes to night photography, spot metering, when you're trying to just, you can pick up even a shot. Uh, I'm going to go back. You should be able to pick up a shot similar to this even in the day. And if you get yourself on spot metering and you meter on the left-hand side of this line, your mm -hmm. shot will be very similar to this, but your background will be available. Your background will be all green, but your line will be half in exposure, half black. Mm -hmm. This can be done in the day. Obviously, the background will be the different part about it. But this is your key. Spot metering is absolutely the key to all this. Yeah. And yeah. if you get your metering and you get your focus on, or even if you're using manual focus, it'll all work out, guys. Trust me. Uh, we spoke, uh, going back to here, how do you focus? And, you know, here's one of the challenges. Use red filter lights. They don't yeah. disturb the animals. Um, the way to work with the red filter light is then you change your photo to black and white. The red filter, you can just go onto your red on the black and white. Um, you're on your black and white side, you've got your different colors. And then just play with your red, brighten or darken your red to get your ex correct exposure. So the red filters are really good like that. Uh, I, I think I jumped the answer to this is um, high ISO, top end camera bodies, NF 2.8 and better lenses. Yeah? Or if you can get it even smaller than 2.8 or bigger then 2.8 is in aperture size. Why not? But high ISO, yes, it's always going to be a problem. Uh, surely learn, understand your bodies, see which way your bodies make noise. But always remember, uh, if your animal is uh, 50 meters from you and you shoot at 1,000 ISO, it'll still be noisy. If your animal is 2 meters from you and you shoot at 1,000 ISO, the noise won't be so visual. You, the noise will be very, very you wouldn't really notice it. And as I said before, man, the D6 has been my biggest, biggest reason or biggest part in my arsenal that is giving me so much better work, nighttime photography access. I mean, I was very skeptic when the D6 came out. I tested it. I loved it. I didn't buy one for the next six to eight months. And then now I've got it and I'm using it more and more. And I'm honestly falling in love with it more and more. I mean, I still have my D850. I won't lose that. I've got my Z7 II now. I've got the Z7 I. Yeah, and yeah. they're beautiful. They're all beautiful cameras, each one with its unique advantage and just work with them. You know, you're given tools. It's not about, what's the word I'm looking for? A good, you know, like a good carpenter doesn't need the best tools in the world. He can find the right way of doing a job. You know, there's many ways of doing the job and it's just about getting it right. It doesn't have to have the best camera in the world. You don't have to have the best lens in the world, but it does help. It does help your sharpness and, um, yeah. you know, having this amazing equipment does make a big difference. Whilst it doesn't mean that you'll be stuck, you can still, you know, uh, I don't want to answer this question because we asked this question early on and I'm going to go back to it because I don't want to answer that. <laughs> what makes an amazing photo? What do you guys feel? And I know a lot of people who've already attended workshops yeah. with me know what I'm going to ask. 
and um, I can see someone said a story makes an amazing photo. Uh, graphite and paper has the answer right. Uh, Hemali Versani has the answer right as well. Yeah, um, there is. There's a lot of, yeah, Medi has the answer right. There's so many. And yes, Medi, we're very lucky to live in Kenya, and so are you, mate. And I'm looking forward Learn to it. Learn with the best good. <laughs> where, where is that? I missed that one. Medimera. <laughs> uh, Medi, yeah. So yeah. Um, here we go. And this is now drum roll, drum roll. Yeah, come on, guys. No, composition. You, you know, we all go there and we sit with our friends who are not photographers and they look at a photo and they say, oh, man, they stick their phone into your face and say, look at this photo. Isn't this amazing? And you look at the photo and you say, the focus mm -hmm. is out. That this is out. That that is out. Oh, the lighting is bad. Absolutely not. For the general person out there, the composition of the image is what draws them into it. Yeah, the lighting might have a reason, but it's not eventually. They don't understand. You know, they look at that leopard shot with rim light. They don't know it's rim light. They just know, oh, look at the lighting on this shot. They don't know what the detail about this is. 90% or should I say all the guys who don't know much about photography still appreciate a great photo because... You know, it's something we are brought up with. We are brought up with imageries. We are brought up with advertisement. We are brought up with TV. We are brought up with documentaries. And you see these great scenes going through, but you don't know what they mean, but just that you get captured by them. And the one thing that captures you is composition. Yeah, And, you know, we as the photographers will then say, yeah, his shots are good, but there's so much ISO noise and there's so much of uh, out of focus and, you know, he could have done this better. But that person, 90% of the people sitting out there have no clue about those details. That's us guys as photographers trying to make ourselves better by mocking down the other person's shot. Composition <laughs> is king. And if you get your composition right, the shot will just fire away. I mean, I don't know if any of you saw that uh, rhino shot of mine with it running. Yeah. Yeah. Composition. Yeah. And, you know, you get that moment right and the shot went ballistic. Yeah. Uh, next thing, obviously, details come after. So forget about the details for starters. Get onto your compositions. And once your compositions, once you start nailing your compositions, the details, you, you see, the thing is, it's like driving. Initially, dealing with the steering, the clutch, and the brake, and the accelerator was such a hard thing. But these days, after you've driven for 10, 20 years, or five years, or two years, it becomes such a natural thing to do that yeah. now you're driving and you're looking at the scenery. You're no longer bothered about the clutch control and the brake and the accelerator and the steering. You're now bothered about the scenery and, ooh, who's that chick going in that car? She looks good, mm -hmm. isn't it? Oh, lose that yeah. guy. You know what I mean? Now, the, the focus has changed. And that's the same thing with photography once you get your compositions you start nailing your compositions those things will come naturally then you yeah. start focusing on detail you start working on the next thing that is giving you trouble and then you'll understand and you'll start nailing that then work on the next thing it's a stage by stage we now none of us were born with cameras yeah, we didn't come with cameras. We all learned how to use them. I've been photographing now for uh, since 2013. And okay. from 2013, I played games for another two, three years and just went out there to show off my big camera and look good in the park. Yeah, I didn't really get good shots. But once I started understanding composition and when the whole thing started coming together on the composition side, I was forced to understand ISO, I was forced to understand aperture, and I was forced to understand shutter speed. Yeah, And to a point where whilst I still don't shoot manual, I find that these days I'm having a tendency to shoot manual more than or trying to work on manual because now I understand how I want my rim light to come. And those sort of things, you know, are best done with metering. But they can also be done with settings, and you can choose on that. But, you know, it's all a curve. My view to you is composition first. Once you start nailing it, then work on the details and go on each one and each year. Put your cameras on automatic. Forget about manual. Nail your composition. Then move to a semi-automatic mode. Uh, shutter priority, aperture priority, 
whatever suits you. Work with that. Once you've nailed how to use aperture priority, move on to shutter priority. Nail shutter priority. Then move on to playing with ISO and then go to manual. When you do that and you learn that way, by the time you get to manual, you'll have such a good understanding of what speed works, what aperture works, and what ISO works in the current conditions that it will just come out so naturally and you'll get such great shots. So thank you very much, guys. And uh, time for questions. Bring them on. Yeah, <laughs> Bring them on. <laughs> I think we kind of answered most of the questions so far. So let's see if I miss something yeah. and if we have something new. That's so we true. start with uh, Cynthia. Uh, 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 hello to all of us. And uh, then... Um, there is Malhar, uh, then uh, Shasti, yeah. and um, let's see, questions, questions, questions. Uh, I think there are some questions coming up new. What method you, what method of AF do you use usually? Or uh, sorry, that's a very good question. Uh, and it's very, very dependent on um, the current conditions because usually I'll always use continuous autofocus, uh, AFC for Nikon guys. And uh, with continuous autofocus, what you get is especially take, for example, a lion walking towards you. I know we all love those sort of shots. Yeah. And when you're using AFC, you just keep your focus button pressed. You're using back focus or the normal focus, and you just keep it pressed. As the lion walks towards you, the camera is automatically calculating the focus. If you use single autofocus, you use just that single and not continuous, what will happen is by the time you focus and shoot, even though the line is walking and you focus and shoot instantly, you'll find that the focus point will go from the eyes to the ears. Yeah. So your shots then become kind of useless in some way yeah. or the other. So continuous autofocus is really amazing, but mm -hmm. there is a limit to it. Imagine you've got a lion lying down in the grass, you've got all these grass blades around. When you're using continuous autofocus, all you'll find is the hunting. The camera will always be, will constantly be playing. And yeah. that's because of these grass blades going across. So in that case, you would use a single autofocus, not continuous. So there is a plus or minus 99% of the time I am on continuous. Mm -hmm. uh, if you guys saw the shots with the rhino running towards me, it's on my Insta. Please go there and have a look. Um, I was there with a photographer and mm -hmm. the two of us were shooting together. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, he didn't have continuous on. He didn't oh. have a single photo worthwhile in focus. Whereas, again, I know maybe Nikon are putting some money in my back pocket. I don't believe so. <laughs> uh, D6 nailed. I think from the 20 to 30 shots I have, I've got one out of focus shot. Every other shot is in focus. I'm blown away by that camera. In 3D autofocus, it will just do magic for you. And you just aim and you just assume you're getting the shots. And trust me, you will be getting the shots with that yeah. thing. That's great. And we have Peter joining us over here. Agree with you. Once you know what you are doing using manual, uh, it's going high. OK, uh, to use manual to get everything right, in particular with mirrorless. Uh, I don't. And the reason for manual, I don't use manual, is that it is extremely complicated. And sometimes it takes a long time to hit, to get the accurate shot the first time. Whereas yeah. if you're going to use shutter priority or you're going to use aperture priority, chances of you getting 90% there on the first shot are very, very high. Whereas in manual, getting that first shot at 90%, takes a lot of practice and it not takes a lot of practice in days and months uh, it takes practice yes. in years you know you've been looking at two three at, no i've been shooting for eight or nine years maybe i'm a lazy shooter but i'm struggling sometimes as well okay. i'll then shoot in shutter priority i'll get my exposure settings and then i'll move to manual uh, mm -hmm. when you're sitting in a studio manual is definitely the best way yes. to go 
Yeah, it is best because you're controlling yourself so much better. It's only when you're out in the wild because here's a sunset coming. I'm sorry, here's a sunset coming, and you're trying to get a shot of this elephant walking across the sunset. The exposure is moving so fast because the sun is dropping, the light is changing so fast that when you're trying to use manual, you are constantly going to have to think more than shoot. Yeah. Whereas if you're using shutter priority, stop thinking, just shoot, get your compositions, work on your compositions. Yeah. Yep. Yep. The next one is from Subi Guch. Uh, your thoughts on camera lens calibration? Uh, important. So try and uh, work, go, go and put yourself at a particular distance. I know a few Nikon ambassadors and they say this is the most important thing to do. Make sure your lens and camera are calibrated on focus. Yeah, so once you've got your focus calibration and you know what the exact sharpest point is, it'll make a big difference. On my D5 with my 180-400, the, the figure was quite far away. You know, I was expecting it to be one, two, three. It was, no, it was actually around 10. Out of the 20, it was 10 up. Yeah, I thought that was weird, but mm -hmm. after that, I got some beautiful sharp shots. So, yes. Very, very important, Subi. And Jay, I'm looking forward to a helicopter trip soon. Huh? Be ready. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> then then uh, in, Latif mentioned that we have all, I mean, you have already answered his question. So there is a thanks, not from him. Uh, then Salil Naya, uh, how much do you experiment like different shots with settings with the subject as they keep on moving in my life? So, um, Interesting and very nice question. So let's take, for example, a day where the animal is moving and the light is good. I will try and work on usually my focal length. So if my lens is at 400, I'll shoot at one four hundredth of a second. If my lens, I have my teleconverter switched on, it's gone to 560, I'll shoot at 640 or or around 500 or somewhere around there, but usually equal to the focal length. So if I'm shooting at 200, I don't mind coming down to one 200th of a second. Then you have where the situation changes. Now you've got a cheetah running. If you're going to go and shoot at one 400 when a cheetah is running, chances are that a lot of your shots will be blurry. So yeah. you're going to have to go to one 1,000, one 2,000, or somewhere around there. And... A big experience of helicopter photography, yeah, you need to be shooting at high eyes, high shutter speeds because of the camera. Sh there's a lot of shake in the helicopter, yeah, vibrations and stuff. So then comes the opposite end of the story where now you're trying to be less of a photographer and more of a creative. So when you go on to become more of a creative, then you go with lower shutter speeds, you increase your aperture, so less light coming in, and then you shoot even at one twentieth of a second, one one hundredth of a second, because you're looking for panning. So yeah. it's the choice is yours where you want to go. And my personal view is: let's say you went into a situation; it was late evening, early morning. If you wanted to shoot at one four hundredth of a second, your automatic ISO is telling you to do 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 ISO, even up to 100,000 or even more than that for the cameras that can go there. That is the situation I will say, okay, now we're going to go the creative side of life where I'm going to drop my shutter speed to 1 15th, 1 20th. Or in cases where I've dropped it to one second, if the subject isn't moving fast enough, you can move your camera faster. Click, yeah. move your camera. Get those trails behind the subject. Yeah. Go the other way. So uh, good question in respect of what do you do, but it is creativity. Indian. Creativity, creativity. Always think of that. How are you going to take a shot that is going to make you different from the four, five, or anybody else who's shooting around the same time? Are you going to be the follower or are you going to be the leader? Think, think, think always. Uh, yeah. Then the next one is from Peter. Uh, when do you decide the photo should be a monochrome shot 
or when do you when you take it or when you or in the post processing time uh, always uh, monochrome in my post processing but as soon as i take a shot up here says monochrome first yeah. then color yeah so up here actually let me be honest with you these days um, i believe these days i have already seen or visualized the finished edited shot when i'm taking it i've already gone to that stage in my head saying okay the lion is here doing this the sky is beautiful or the background is like this this is going to be a beautiful black background shot this is going to be a beautiful with clouds shot or this is going to be a beautiful if you've seen my shots where i like the white backgrounds the white background shot i've already chosen that when i'm shooting i've already pre-planned that so a lot of these edits that you see me doing aren't just hey lucky today i found this edit works well no it's already planned i've already seen the image i have placed myself I've placed my vehicle, I've placed my camera, I've chosen my composition and my position based on the edit I want to do. Yeah, so in the case where I want a black background, I want a bush in the back. In the case where I want a white uh, background, I'll probably go for the sky in the back. So I've already chosen the type of edit I want before I've pressed shoot. Great. Yeah. Uh, so... Uh, Salil said a uh, uh, wonderful explanation on continuous and stationary focus. The next one is from Kush. Hey, Kush, mirrorless versus uh, DSLR. What's your thought? Kush, I have two mirrorless and I have two mirrored. So I'm on 50-50 balance. <laughs> uh, when the Z9 comes out, yes, I will be buying it because I want to be putting it against my uh, D850. And the biggest part I like about the mirrorless is the big new mount. So there's less diffraction. And I'm looking forward to that mount uh, 2.8, but the mirrorless lens, not the mirrored connected onto the mirrorless. Um, last weekend, we had the Safari Rally in Kenya. Mm -hmm. I didn't take my D6 with me. I took my Z7 II and my Z7. And all my shots captured at the rally were with the Z7. I had these cars zooming besides me. And literally, I put it on one 400, one 500 of a second, continuous autofocus. And the Z7 II was able to track the vehicle all through. Again, very similar to the D6, maybe practice makes this better, is I had... 95% of my shots in focus and maybe two, three, five shots out of focus. So hats off to that lens camera. I wasn't expecting to see that well. Um, the tech that's going into these mirrorless lens cameras these days is phenomenal. Um, and, and, you know, we're looking at D850, which is four years old now? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Or I think I it's think four or five years old. Four or five, yeah. I think, yeah. Yeah, four or five years old. Uh, we should know that's the first time we met when uh, Marcel was launching yes. it. Yes. Yeah. With, that's when we met. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. So, I mean, that was when the D850 was released. And the Z7 is four years newer. Yeah. The sensor is still the same as the D850. That tech is there, but all the electronics around it are phenomenal. I mean, what they can pull out of a Z7, which is so much more tinier than a D850, is unbelievable. Yeah. Okay. yeah, so I know we are happy with our good, old, amazing cameras, but I'll be very honest with you, with the way the industry, it's like computers. Mm -hmm. You know, you buy a computer today, six months down the road, it's no longer great it's old it's cameras are moving with that sort of speed the, the 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 whole electronics factor in them and what they're capable of on how they are able to save bad photographers like me and make me look so good is unbelievable yeah so yeah. look look out for it yeah look yeah. out for it on that note i think we have one more question from salin uh do throw some light on the upcoming d9 you surely would uh it's jumped uh you surely would be and one of them enlightened one of the enlightened ones one to use the lens 600 mm 
Mirala Cespo. I mean, uh, I, as- I assume you mean Z9. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, I am looking forward to it. I, I am very, I've got my ears very close to the ground. I'm seeing what they're doing with that camera. Um, 600 lens, that's not my cup of tea. I'm not into telephotos to that extent. Yes, I know I've got the 400 with the 1.4 tele when I go and get those detailed shots on my subjects, but I'm a guy of wide angle. I'm more excited and more looking forward to using it on a 2470 than a 600 millimeter. And uh, unless Nikon gives me a free 600, I won't have it. <laughs> yeah, but I'm definitely <laughs> looking forward for a lightweight. Yeah, lightweight. But you, you know, uh, this is unfair for you guys shooting in India because I believe in India you definitely need a 600 because your subjects yes. don't come as close as Mara in Kenya. You know, in Kenya we're really spoiled because lions <laughs> come to use the shade of our vehicle to chill, you know. Yeah. We take selfies with them with our phones. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, a lot of people, you know, my friends from India or photographers have a feel that it's more like a zoo, but it's not like a zoo. But then, yeah, we are lucky that they are used to us to some extent. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Yeah, if it was a zoo, we'd be riding them. Yeah, so we're, <laughs> we're cool with it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, so the question next one from me: How do you calibrate the lens? Um, thanks for uh, the great presentation. We H twelve. Uh, Veer, I would recommend that you use Google and use Google uh, basically focus uh, fine tuning and go and do focus fine tuning. It will take you to a Nikon page, hopefully, and Nikon will have an explanation on their website on how to do it. And please follow that because okay. every camera has a very little bit of a variation in it. Yeah, the older cameras versus the newer camera. So please go Google. You'll get it done. Yeah, no so offense to by yourself you. Or? Uh, sorry, go again. You do it by yourself or you give it to an icon to do the calibration? Uh, I've done it myself um, in the past. Um, and I've seen uh, the, the, the ambassadors that I know. One of them is uh, Peter, uh, Peter, Russell, Peter Russell from uh, UK. He does it before he starts any photography workshop. That's the first thing he gets to do with all his clients. Get your calibration done. Um, Veer, I'm sorry. I'm going to have a bit of a kick at you. It's something to do with guys at a young age, all these millennials. Uh, They like to ask before they like to Google and find out and research. But please, (laughs) uh, it's not pointed directly at you. But what I'm going to say to you is, please put some effort in trying to understand. Uh, I know it's a, you've asked a very good question. I totally appreciate it. I'm not talking about this question, but what I'm trying to say to you is put your head down and focus into what you're trying to do. Use Google. And when you get stuck, go out asking questions. Because when you solve a problem yourself, it will, one, give you great satisfaction, and two, you'll never, ever forget it because you worked hard. It came from inside of you. When you go around asking questions, today you ask a question, you'll get the answer, you'll do it. Two days later, you'll be looking for that same answer, or two months later, you'll be looking for that same question. Go out there, work hard, and do it. And that goes not only to Veer, that goes to everybody out there. You know, go there, research, try to do and find this thing yourself. And once you do that, honestly, the satisfaction. I mean, I used to be one of those guys who loved gadgets and I'd buy every new gadget and everything new. And that's how I got into cameras because it was a gadget for me. I wanted this new gadget. But once I've got into this part of creativity and understanding how to get these photos and, you know, sit down, understand exposure and all this sort of stuff. And, you know, now, as I said to you, you've pre-figured out the shot after edit before you've shot it. And then you come here and you go into your Lightroom and you get that solution. You get that shot, how you envisaged, how you planned it. There's nothing more satisfying. And the best part is that you did all that yourself in your mind and everything like that. Honestly, it is so satisfying. Work on that, mate. You'll feel so great about your own photography. Yeah. 
Uh, the next is from Mehdi. Uh, thank you for your advice on buying a, a D850 as a second camera after the D500. I haven't mastered the beast fully yet, uh, but it's amazing. I'm struggling with C series, as you know. Uh, let, let me rephrase that. So now D850 should be your main camera, and the yes. second camera should be the D500. D500. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let's rephrase that. Yeah, the D850 is the machine to have. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but then you're like, looking forward. Uh, let's got catch a C series up. as well. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I know he did struggle with the Z series. Uh, I didn't have it used so much. I've had a bit more experience behind it. Uh, let's have a sit down, Mendy, when you're next uh, around in Nairobi, or we can catch up in Mara. Uh, Mendy is the manager of a group of hotels that has a lot of lodges around the country. So I'm going to be very nice to Mendy. Hi, Mendy. <laughs> Yeah, so we're just going to joke around. So maybe, no, we'll, let's get together and sort it out, man. We need to, we are due a sit down. We had a, we've been talking about it for a long time. So let's get it sorted out and we can discuss and organize this um, yeah. uh, workshop thing and how to get th these devices working. And for sure, it's a personal experience for each photographer. Yeah. And that's the best time about it, mate. You know, it's that experience. It's that personality. Every photographer will have his own take, his own composition to every shot. Yeah, initially, we do like to copy, but think about it. You know, how are you going to be unique? How are you going to be yourself? Not yeah. how are you going to be a Nisha or how are you going to be a Gucharan or how are you going to be a Hermes parting there doing nothing so good? <laughs> 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 so so that's how you want you to think about it which way which one of these camps do you want to sit in and the yeah. best camp is when you do the work hard yourself yeah, yeah. and then we have one question from malhar please also host a webinar where you could educate us on white background i truly love this webinar i really am looking forward to see you again on post trades done deal next one on whites Great. Yeah, so my my innocent side, yeah. We're going to call that my innocent side, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So we'll put the date and we'll announce it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. No problem. Thank you for that. We'll do it. Then uh, we have one question from Eduardo. However, old uh, even cameras from fifteen years ago can do a great job. We totally agree on that. When you use it properly. Uh, more than the recent ones makes things too easy. More, yeah, more recent ones make things too easy. That's totally true. I agree. They do make things too. E they make things not too easy. They make things easy, but it's still your understanding that's important. Yeah. Yes, the electronics in there do help you getting it wrong, but look at it from this point of view: if somebody's out there spending ten thousand dollars on a trip to Mara. Uh, somebody's out there spending even more money on a trip on a helicopter with me. And then you get on the helicopter and you find you made a mistake on one setting and you lose all your photos. So thank you to new cameras where they can support you doing that. And yes, there'll always be that person who still has that fancy new camera, has no clue what to do with yeah. it and fail with it. So it's down to you. If you're understanding, you know, as I said to you earlier, it's the carpet and the tools you have. It's up to you up here to have a pencil and have an amazing drawing with it, or you have a pencil and just do. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, up to you. it's totally yeah. up to you how creatively you use that device in your hand. So, yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, then, yeah, it's your home anytime by uh, <laughs> Mehdi again. Cynthia saying thanks <laughs> and Angel saying yeah. thanks. Yeah, thank you very much, guys. Super. And uh, I promised myself I'll try and do this in one hour. The workshop, the slideshow did, was shot, but we're pushing on. Yeah? Well done. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm less than my two hours. You must be impressed with me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah usually our sessions are two hours plus. So we have one. We had one session three hours almost. So did we? Oh wow! Yeah. I think one session was really long, but it was most of. More, I think after one and a half hour, it was one and a half hour Q and A. So it was. Yeah. Uh, it, yeah, it, it was, was fun. Yeah, it was fun. And also, you know, what we had in that session is we had picked up a lot of topics. We went from ground level to yes. aerial yes. to all that sort of ways. Today, we're only focusing with blacks. Yeah, and I think that makes it easy for people as well so that they are yeah. 
focusing only on one element they can take an as a class yeah yeah so uh, obviously we'll work on getting the white background white one next yes yeah and we'll do the white ones and i'll yes. try and also be a bit more interactive and i'll uh, try and see if we can do like uh i'll, I'll try and record a video of one converting into a white out shot and yes. see how long it takes and play that as a video so you guys could see as well great really really simple but uh yeah but you know until the, it's simple until unless you know how to do yeah. it <laughs> and, and again you know for, um um, a lot for the same thing, background is key. It's always about the background. As much as the foreground and the composition of the subject is important, background is key to these blacks and whites. Yes. And once you get that key sorted, everything will just fall in place. Yeah. Uh, Salil, uh, I do agree on the same thing. We are, we are loving it and such a humble way, in such a humble way, man. I'm you, have, you have to stretch that. You have to stretch that to as much as you can. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Salil. Uh, thank you, Lamak. Yes, Lamak. Uh, see, see you on Monday. I'm doing a session for Nikon in Nairobi. Okay. It's going to be a classroom session next okay. Monday. Uh, Mazar is around. Uh, oh, okay, yeah, I have, know it's uh, me. Yeah, Mazar is also around. And also we've got, um, he's also a photographer from Dubai. Uh, yeah, Dubai. His, his name is Asim. Asim mm -hmm. Chima, we did a light trail workshop with the steel wool with him. That mm -hmm. was really beautiful. And uh, looking forward to these sessions. I'm looking forward to seeing Mazar. I've never met Mazar, though. I've met, oh, really? uh, yeah, I've obviously, I've met all the other guys who've come over. I've not met mm -hmm. him, so I'm looking forward to that. And uh, we're going to talk about uh, wildlife with the Z series. Mm -hmm. And as a ending of some rally photos in there as well. So... For the guys who are attending, cool. For the guys who think they can attend online, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now to wind up one question. Uh, sure. What do you think, C6 Mark II or C7 Mark II, if you're going to compare between these two, what's your comments? Uh, I've used the Z6 Mark II and I've used the Z7 Mark II. And I mm -hmm. think there's a catch. If you're going to do video, mm -hmm. Z6 Mark II, if you're mm -hmm. going to do more photography, Z7 mm -hmm. Mark II. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But I'm honestly still getting, I'm still, un, I can't see, I, you know, doing that rally photography with what the Z7 II has done for me. And so mm -hmm. the Z7 I. Uh, I don't know if you saw that shot with the dust trail. Uh, I, uh, it's my second last post on Instagram. So it's mm -hmm. a shot of a rally car going round the corner. Okay. But I waited for the rally car to go far enough and then took the shot. Uh, you, you know my little aerial pole, the 10 meter pole that I have? Okay. Yeah, so, I know. Yeah, so so it's a, basically it's an aerial shot with a 14 millimeter and the car going round a bend, it's two thirds gone. Mm -hmm. And you just have a trail of dust at the back wow. in black and white. It it looks amazing. I felt it looked nice. Uh, the feedback I've got for that shot has been amazing. So <laughs> I, I'm sure it's nice now. But <laughs> if you just go there, have a look and yeah. see what you like. And um, I'm getting messages on uh, WhatsApp now saying mm -hmm. uh, shots are captivating, makes you feel like you're there and part of the magic. Thank you. Uh, I've got requests for workshops. Thank That's you. Great. I'll respond to you shortly. And um, thank you, everybody, for attending. And absolutely, poor trails, man. You guys make it happen. So thank you very much. Thank Your you. little school that you're doing really, really works out. It's such a beautiful thing you guys are doing. Yeah. And you know what I love about this is it's not about acquiring great shots and making yourself popular and famous. It's about sharing that knowledge with everybody that you are. Yeah putting together that's what's so amazing about this you guys amazing um, thank you that was the whole idea when we started for yeah. as well you know it's all about sharing knowledge and bringing people more closer to nature yeah so yeah. again sorry just a few suleiman thank you uh, instagram share um neil again yes i will 
get in touch with you shortly. And then I have got somebody, I won't say the name, but they're offering, I think I can grow my Instagram account. Yeah, forget it. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a hoop, man. I got <laughs> messed up with my Facebook with uh, some crazy stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's so much of this happening. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Well, such is life. You have to find the best out of it, not the worst. Uh, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Sometimes, you know, no matter how experienced you are, you still get into some traps. So, so question I have for you after yeah. spending 365 days in the Mara. Mm -hmm. I haven't spent uh, 365 days in the Mara. 300, was... 300 days in the Mara. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're waiting for these crazy shots to come now. Are they, are you, are they, are they all black photos? Huh? Yeah, as I said, you know, this workshop has been inspired by your white. Yeah, I'm inspired by your black photos. Yeah, that, that's what I said. It's either black or white. I'm Is it the black or white? <laughs> We're looking forward to those shots, and I'm sure you've got some crazy. I mean, I saw you had these shots of was it? Uh, uh, Lorian, or was it Luluka with the baby jumping on top of the right mom? on top of oh, her? It was wow. it was Luluka. It was Luluka and those it, shots. You, were you, crazy. You, you cannot believe it. It was me and Joni was actually going to get some uh, groceries for us. <laughs> and wait, 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 wait. You go to get groceries with a camera. Yes. <laughs> 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 it was on our way back. We we heard that Lulu is in that area, and yeah, only yeah. two vehicles were there. And in one oh, vehicle, wow. there were two photographers, and uh, I think uh, in in our vehicle it was me. And uh, yeah, the one the lady in the other vehicle got one, but she mentioned that she was using a hundred four hundred mm with a the camera, which but it was not supporting pretty much when it comes to. ISO performance, so she said oh. the noise level was too high, but only we two were there and we managed to get some great shots. <laughs> so it was not only you, it was you, Johnny, and the groceries, yeah? And yes. hope the ice cream wasn't melting. Ice cream and all the steps were there, and Johnny was like, yeah. <laughs> It's okay. You don't worry about it. You take it. No worries. He's such, he's such an amazing guy. He is honestly such a cool and amazing guy. I love that about him. Yeah, I really love that about him. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I had some great, great moments with specifically talking about Luluka. Some amazing, amazing moments with her. And Lorian, we were the first people to see Lorian and the cub. The first one to see the oh, cabin. Wow. Beautiful. Yeah. It's not a matter who sees the first one, it's who no, gets, the, the, best moment, shot. Who gets the best shot. Remember, yeah? <laughs> the best once again is you know, from one person to one person, but yeah, well, I got some course, amazing of moments. Course. Of course, we're only messing around, man. That's yeah. such amazing. I Lucky have a message you. to pass it to Angad. Angad, we are out of stock with the book, uh, but we are planning to go ahead with uh, doing one more round of printing of this one. We'll definitely keep you posted on that. Uh, saying that, I have three books. Uh, I've, got one here. I've got three books at my office, Angad. So if you want, uh, if you're next traveling to Kenya, give me a shout. I'll get your book organized. Now he will say he need to get passport. <laughs> <laughs> you you obviously know him better than I do. <laughs> no, we had a we had a webinar with him, so that's what he said. He is definitely planning for uh, uh, Mara, but first thing is getting his passport. Passport sorted out. Cool. And then once you've got your passport sorted out, yeah. you do make your way to Kenya. I'll hold a book for you. How's that? Yeah. Or is that incentive <laughs> enough for you to come to Kenya? <laughs> <laughs> on that note, thank you, Guch, and we will definitely plan uh, another session on white background. And oh, I have a passport. He's got it. He's got it. Oh, that's <laughs> <we'll> great. <laughs> <laughs> Done. Two books gone. So I've got one more. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. That's great. Awesome. So yeah, thank you, Guch, once again, and thank, thank you, you all for being here and uh, being supportive. And uh, thanks, Guch. We'll definitely work on the next one, which is going to be focusing on the white background. Yeah. Thank, so thank you we really much. appreciate and your support. You are one of the person who were with us from the beginning till all this way. So we are really looking forward to it too as we move further. And 
as we mentioned we have something more coming up from our side hopefully in the next session we will be able to make the announcement properly as you know can i do it live can i do it live from there yeah more more things are I'm coming up forward. here the whole idea so, is to uh, be a platform in every possible angle and connect with all the wonderful photographers mm -hmm. from across the world and spread awareness using photography and connect more people to nature that's all about postrays and that's all about our photographers who are connecting with us as well have you got it printed and written out on the wall next in front of you because you read it so well yeah. <laughs> it's all prepared huh? all prepared <laughs> i mean this is something which i'm kind of talking about it every i think so it sounds like it, it was all what did they say eh? rehearsed and prepared and boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Practice. I need to do Practice. my workshops like that. I need Practice. to do my workshops like that and not go, you know, fishtailing everywhere and then come to the point. Yeah. 365 days. I'm on 319. So I'm kind of saying this every day. Yeah. And you guys think I'm lucky in Kenya. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Of course, that's the plus point of being in Kenya and just a yeah. just few minutes drive to get into Nairobi National Park. But he doesn't meet uh, my when on my grocery trip. I don't see Luluka. Yeah? <laughs> 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 on shopping trips, I don't see Luluka. Yeah. <laughs> I only see stolen mirrors and missing parts from my car on on, on grocery trips. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everything got its own plus and minus. <laughs> yeah, sure, exactly. But uh, thank you very much. Thank you, everybody, yeah. for attending. Thank you for the very easy questions. I was expecting worse ones, but <laughs> yeah, thank you very because much. Because you explained it so well, so there was nothing more to ask. Uh, super. I kept try to keep it as simple as possible. I didn't go too much into delving into detail because the realistic factor is that the more detail you go into, the more yes. the more you're going to confuse yourself. Keep it simple. Work on metering, yes. and you'll find the shots will come. And then once you need to get into a bit more editing, maybe we can work on some sort of editing class or something. It's not a problem. It and you know, guys, just sit there and focus and. Please don't overcomplicate. I know people spend hours looking into manual and camera settings. None. Some yes make sense. Okay, let me just put it this way. When I buy a new camera, I first move it to shutter priority now. I put the ISO on automatic. I put uh, focus on to continuous, um, continuous focus. I will change the shutter to high speed. Uh, and then I will try and s I, I like to change one of the function buttons on the front as a review because sometimes you're shooting, you don't have time to lift your hand and look at the shot, review the shot. So I change one of the shortcut buttons to review so I can quickly just see the shot with using one hand. I don't need to use two hands. And the biggest one that I really like to do is I always turn on the lines in the viewfinder so I can have a more ease in composing my shots. So I have my rule of thirds, or should I say my the, yeah. the lines that yeah. come into the viewfinder so you can see your horizons if your photo is straight or bent or whatever it is. And guys, that is it. I do not play with any other setting in the camera unless it's something in particular that I'm stuck on. I do nothing else in the camera. So basically within five minutes, the camera is connected to a lens, battery is charged, inserted, and it's out in the field shooting with me. And that's what I like to do. Just It's always about composition. That's yeah. I hope I can drill it into you guys and put composition in there and say it's composition, composition, composition. And composition, yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So thank you, Guj. Thanks thank a lot. Thank you very much. Cheers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's then before I start another topic. Yeah. Thank you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Bye. Bye. All right. So that was good. And as as always, you know, good sessions are like from the beginning till the end. It's nothing but energy. He keep that energy from the first sentence to the last sentence till he say bye. And the knowledge he share. He's somebody who do workshops and who do paid sessions, and he never said no to any of the requests we 
uh, ever asked him. So that's the plus point when you are interacting with people who really care for the community, who really think about spreading awareness. That's how people react. So thanks, good, and thank you all. And let's catch up with another session soon. We will be doing the announcement, and we have a couple of uh, uh, interesting sessions lined up. And this is still the time of COVID, so please take care. If you don't, if you still haven't had your vaccinations, please do the booking and get it done. It's very important. And if you're going out, make sure you're using double layer of mask and keeping your hands clean and using a gloves or hand sanitization. And if you're going out, make sure you're keeping social distancing too. By taking care of yourself, you're not only taking care of yourself, your loved ones and the rest of the world too. So please stay safe, take care, till we catch up next time. Stay safe. Bye-bye.